Well, come back to what you, you said in, in the title of your book, An Antidote to Chaos. And chaos is associated with the feminine and order with the masculine. Symbolically, that's the case, yeah. And, and it's the case in stories and, and symbolic representations all over the world, yeah. But that doesn't mean that order is good and chaos is bad. Well, from a female perspective, it might sound like that. Well, lots of things that are chaotic and uncertain in life are good. Everybody likes a bit of a surprise and everyone likes novelty and novelty which is part of the chaotic domain, symbolically speaking, is the place that all new things come from. And too much order is tyranny. So it's, it's, it's clearly the case that both of these, these realms, let's say, which is the realm that you understand and the realm that you don't understand, roughly speaking, both of them have their positive and negative aspects. So if there's too much order, then everything is stagnant and stultified and boring and dull and predictable. And if there's too much chaos, then everything destabilizes and people get anxious and upset and overwhelmed. And we're, we're always mediating between those two things. It's actually why you have two hemispheres, by the way, because one of them deals with order. That's the left hemisphere. And the other deals with chaos. And those are the fundamental elements of life, what you know and what you don't know. And why do they have to be male, female? Well, they're rep they have to be represented somehow in our conceptual schemes. And they're not male and female. They're masculine and feminine. Masculine and feminine, right, yeah. Right. Well, because thing, we, tend to, we tend to personify phenomena. That's, that, you see that happening in movies, for example. Especially, especially, it's very, very common in animated movies where these domains will take on personification because we tend to understand the world through a social lens. We tend to tell stories about everything. Right? We tend to see the world as if it's an unfolding story. And so the, the, the fundamental elements of the world tend to manifest themselves as characters. And then we understand the world in, 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 in understanding how these characters unfold. So in, in the Disney movie, Sleeping Beauty, for example, the evil queen, she's a symbolic representation of chaos. She's Mother Nature. And everyone understands these things when they go see these films. So, and when they read books that are, that are symbolic, fairy tales and, and old stories and that sort of thing, it's built right into our cognitive architecture. The, just to, to come back to this chaos. Hi. Female or feminine? Male or masculine? What's the difference? Okay, it's easy. Female. A girl, not a boy, a girl, a female dog, a female, okay, a woman, whereas feminine describes a person with characteristics of a woman, but that doesn't mean it's a woman, okay, you can have feminine men, men who are genetically male, but with feminine characteristics, okay, feminine ways of dressing or ways of talking, and the same with male or masculine, male says this is a man, okay, this, genetically this is a man, whereas masculine describes something with male characteristics. You could describe a bar as masculine, a place for men or people with a masculine characteristic. Okay? So again, male, a man, masculine with male characteristics, but not necessarily a man. So, oh, there you go. If you enjoyed the video, give it a rating. You could make this video a favourite. Do please leave your comments and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Bye for now.